three, two, one. Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Panfire 11 and welcome to, uh, I guess, a deck profile for the new GX deck. I just want to show you guys the cards that I have in my deck, and then maybe you guys can help me improve. So first off, uh, I didn't build this deck. All credit goes to Mario, Megafire13, uh, 3AM Gaming, I believe is his YouTube channel. Um, I'll make sure to have him linked below if I don't comment down below and remind me, because I probably forgot. So I'm super tired, so excuse me if I'm sounding very tired, um, but I did want to get this out for you guys because a lot of you guys have been asking, and you guys have been enjoying Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Um, so we're also trying to get that out, hopefully every Sunday, but yeah, anyways, let's get into the deck profile, which you guys are here for. So yeah, let's start off. So yeah, once again, Mario made this deck, so big thank you to him. Uh, but you guys could help me come up with some extra cards and stuff uh, to put in, to, uh, yeah, to put in to make it better, or what you guys want to see in the roleplay, so yeah. Anyways, remember, I'm a noob at this game. I really don't know anything about this game. So, please bear with me if I don't explain something correctly or anything like that. I'm not a pro. <laughs> Just want to let that be known. Uh, but yeah, anyways. We have two big koalas in the deck. Just a really good monster. And he's used for the material for Master of Oz. And, uh, yeah, so he's pretty cool. Uh, then we got Behemoth, the King of All Animals. I know somebody suggested this. And we already had him. So yeah, he's pretty cool. I've never really been able to take full effect of him yet in any of like my practice duels or anything. But he's pretty cool. Now these two cards, the Great Bamboo and the Yellow bam Baboon. <laughs> baboo. Bab bam blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the Green Baboon and the Yellow Baboon. They're both cool. So basically if a face-up uh, beast type gets destroyed. Uh, for this one, I have to pay 1,000 life points. I can special summon him. Or for this one, I can discard two beast-type monsters in the graveyard. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then you get a 2600 attack monster for when they destroy something. So it's pretty cool. Then we got a Berserk Gorilla in here. He's pretty cool for, like, a leadoff card if you can get him. Uh, he just has 2000 attack. If he gets put in a face-up defense position, though, he just gets destroyed. And he has to attack. So if, there's, like, if, you, if he's out there and there's a monster, say, with 2600 attack, you have to attack and you have to lose that. So usually in that point, you just want to switch your guy to defense mode. Uh, next up, one of my favorite cards in this deck actually is the uh, Ape Fighter. Uh, this card, uh, if it destroys an opponent's monster, it gains 300 attack. But you have to keep attacking with it because if it doesn't, then you just lose all your gained attack. So it's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, next up, we have the Vampire Koala. You get the if you inflict battle damage, you get that back into your uh, life points. A lot of you guys probably know about these cards, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go through them. Uh, then we get the Enraged Battle Ox. Battle Ox, sorry. <laughs> he does uh, piercing damage, which is pretty cool. Fencing Fire Fair, it's also one of my favorite cards in this deck. Actually, hold on. Yeah, so we have that. You guys know his effect. We have the Trojan Horse, pretty cool. Uh, the Desk Koala, <laughs> the Desk Kangaroo, excuse me. He's just used for the summit or the material for uh, Master Boz once again. The Bu Bujingi Wolf. I, I, <laughs> I probably said that so terrible. Everybody's going to make fun of me. Uh, but yeah, he's pretty cool. He's a 2000 defense monster. And he makes it so other beast, beast warrior, and wing type monsters cannot be destroyed. So if you can keep him alive, you're doing a really good thing. Uh, next up, we have the Death's Wombat. Making any card effects like damage become zero. So I think that would work with Nightmare Wheel. I don't know if the Nightmare Wheel has to be on him or if it can be on anything, but yeah, it's something to learn. Uh, then we got Dusk Koala, also one of my favorite cards if for like a leadoff if you can get it. And he's also used for... No, he's not. Just kidding. Don't listen to me. Uh, but yeah, inflict 400 damage to your opponents for each card in the hand. So we got two of them. Uh, then we got the Hex Sealed Fusion, the Earth Hex Sealed Fusion. Basically, he's a substitute for any fusion material. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all I know about him. Um... And then the King of Swamp, I know he's also a substitution, or you could use him to get a polymerization in your hand. So he's pretty cool as well. Then we have the Tree Otter. The Tree Otter is one pretty cool card too. If you have another Beast Monster, you can use its effect and gain a thousand attack. So that's pretty cool. Uh, then we got this Tuner Monster, uh, and I believe Tuners are used for the Synchros. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, just I don't really know anything else about the car besides use them. Um, if you, if you have them out, then you can summon one of these things. Uh, then I have the Sea Koala. His effect's really cool too. <laughs> uh, you have to control another beast monster too. Uh, but basically, just make any monsters attack a zero. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this card, this card, uh, it's it's it works if you can get it to work. Basically, if your deck or your uh, 
Graveyard is just beast, which sometimes mine isn't because I have some beast warriors and I have some I have that rock type, that aqua type. Uh, but yeah, usually it's all beast. So if if my graveyard's all beast, then I can like when I summon this card, I can tribute it and I can bring any monster in my hand or the graveyard. It says that's interesting, but that monster will not be able to attack that turn. Uh, the key mouse, same thing. It's just a tuner monster, and I know if, it, if it's destroyed, I can bring another level three or lower. So I guess I can bring a Sea Koala. <laughs> then we got two Polymerizations in the deck. A Rock Sunli Sunrise. Uh, Pot of Greed. Wild Nature's Release. This card's kind of hard for me to use. Because when this card, like, it gives you basically the defense of your monster to its attack. Um, but then afterwards, it just gets destroyed. So I mean, like, if you have the Bujin, Bujin, the thingy up here. Oh wait, no, I don't even think that would work. If you, if you had the spiritual forest, I guess I would. I think that would stop it. But yeah, it's a pretty good combo. Uh, Swords of revealing, revealing light, obedient school. It summons three level two monsters with uh, different names from your deck, but they can't have any. They don't have any effects, and they're destroyed during the end phase. So usually, if you get this card at the start, it's pretty good uh because you can just get a, uh one of these cards out i think you can get the number card like right away yeah two level two beast monsters so that's all you can really get <laughs> so you can get like uh this thing this thing and this thing you get all three of them and then bam you get a number card which is pretty good uh then graceful charity monster reborn mystical space typhoon twin twister uh spiritual forest future fusion is pretty cool i can just summon this card First turn, it doesn't do anything. First standby, you select the card, so I usually select Master of Oz. And then the next turn, uh, you'll get rid of both of the fusion monsters, so the koala and the the kangaroo. They would be taken away. And then the turn after that, Master of Oz comes out. The only downside to this card is if they destroy this card, your monster gets destroyed too. Uh, next up, we have United We Stand, a card I used in my last Yuga season. By the way, this is so people confused. I don't know why you're confused, but <laughs> there's uh, these are different. These GX characters are different than our other series. It's a different timeline, different, uh, different time period. I guess it's a dual academy in the future. I guess as Richie described it to me. Uh, so yeah, because I, I guess there's an anime for this that people have watched and it's like different. So yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Closed Forest. That's pretty cool. Spilled card. I used this card last in my other Yu-Gi-Oh series and as well. Uh, then I got Dark Mirror Force. I honestly just put this card. This card wasn't in here. I put it in here. This card's honestly just in here for because I was doing test duels against Sika and all his monsters in defense mode. So it annoyed me. So I put this card in there. Never used it. I've never used this card before. Uh, then I got Horn of the Phantom Beast. It just gives my monster 800 attack. And if I if the equipped monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, I get to draw one card. So that's pretty cool. Uh, bottomless Trap Hole. Super Rush Recklessly has saved me a few times, but it's kind of difficult to use. Um, basically, I activate this card, I get rid of one of my cards, and then I can shuffle their card back into the deck, whatever card I selected on. So it's pretty cool. Uh, then we got Threatening Roar, Mirror Force, Dust Tornado, Nightmare Wheel, Bers Berserking. Uh, so once per turn during your main phase or your opponent's battle phase, you can select up uh, two face-up Beast-type monsters on the field. Till the end of the turn, one of the selected monsters loses half of his attack, and the other monster gains an equal amount of attack. So basically, um, let's say I have uh, the Berserk Gorilla and the Wolf thing out there, right? So if I activate a Berserk King, I click the Wolf first, uh, the monster would lose half of its attack, so it would go down to what? Okay, that was the difficult one. It would do, it would do Wombat. <laughs> it, would gain, it would go down to 800, and then the Berserk Gorilla would be up to 2800, 2,800 attack for that turn. And I could do that during their battle phase as well. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have Rivalry of Warlords. I kind of know how to use this card sometimes, kind of don't. Basically, if they have a really powerful monster, and they're different types in like, their main deck or something, you can make them select which type of monster they want to keep so you need to get rid of like all their little setup cards or you can get rid of the powerful monster depending on what they pick that's really the only situation I've been able to use it in and I, I don't know if that's like the best way to use it or anything so maybe you guys could help me out with that and then finally we have Call the Haunted then our uh, extra deck we got two Master Vases I just added another one because why not I can <laughs> uh, then we have Koala 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 
Koala Koala. <laughs> I've never really brought him out yet. I don't use him too much, even in my test duels. Uh, but basically, if you send one beast type monster from your hand to the graveyard, to, and then you can target one monster your opponent controls and destroy it. So that would work well in combo if I had like a call of a haunted or something. And let's say I had like this thing, the big koala. And so let's say I just put the big koala in my graveyard. I can destroy a monster on the field, and then I can bring out the big koala with call of a haunted. So it's a pretty cool combo. There's opportunities there for sure. Uh, then next up, I have Leo, the keeper of the sacred tree. Just a really powerful, this is the most powerful synchro monster I have, I believe. Uh, then I have Naturia Leo Drake. So I, I'm still kind of confused on this. Do they need to equal the stars? I think that's tr they have to equal the stars. Because you need one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. So I'm pretty sure they have to equal the stars on the card. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like I said, I'm a noob at this game. Please don't roast me. Uh, so yeah, then they have Naturia Leo Drake. You have the Thunder Unicorn. I believe he made an appearance in the roleplay. Or maybe it was one of the outtakes. I'm going to start uploading uh, cool duels that are not necessarily useful for the uh, for the roleplay. Uh, on the side, as well as like deck duels and stuff. If you guys want to see that, let me know. Uh, but yeah, we have Thunder Unicorn. We have Naturia Beast. Uh, then we have Diamond Dire Wolf. And then we have my number 64, Ronin Raccoon... S Sandeu, Sandeu. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically my deck. I have this card in the side. Mario just had Mario had a bunch of cards in the side actually. He had this card. Um, uh, what else did he have? He had. I didn't put any of those cards that he had in the side. In hold on, let me exit. Uh, deck edit. Yeah, he had all these cards in here. Let's, put, let's just drag all these up here. I forgot how to like, click it, so I'm just going to manually drag them all in. Uh, so we had Hay to Hain, uh, Soul Tiger, Horn of the Unicorn, Scapegoat. And yeah, that's what we're going to use. We're going to add all four of those cards in. And I believe that was everything. So let's go ahead and sort. So yeah, that's the final deck. We have 55 cards in our deck now, uh, plus eight on the side. So yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this deck profile. If you guys have any ways you think you can like improve the deck, obviously like not super OP. Remember, we're trying to go for entertaining duels, not necessarily quick five-minute duels. We're trying to make it entertaining, I guess, kind of like uh, I watched a little bit of the first like season of the cartoon thing, the anime, I guess, for Yu-Gi-Oh. So yeah, kind of something like that. You want to keep the duels entertaining. Uh, so obviously, we don't want to be summoning four synchro monsters or whatever in one turn and then just like wiping them out in one turn. We don't want to do that. We want to make the duels last, get some cool tension and stuff in there. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this deck duel. If you guys have any uh, thoughts or opinions on the deck, please let me know. If you guys have any helpful tips for a noob like me, you can also let me know. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, hopefully you guys continue to enjoy the roleplay. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.